This is a video on the area of an ellipse. The question states, find the area of the ellipse x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So to find the area, we can solve for y and then integrate. It'll be a little more tricky than that, but let's start it out. So to solve for y, first subtract x squared over a squared on both sides, and we get y squared over b squared is equal to 1 minus x squared over a squared. Then to get rid of the square, I'm going to take a square root of both sides and then multiply by the b, because after we've taken a square root of b squared, we get a b. And notice when you take a square root of both sides, you get a plus or minus. So what we get is y is equal to plus or minus b times the square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared. So it's a pain to have a plus or minus. So it's easier to kind of look at this and say, hey, we got an ellipse. The minus part is the bottom. The plus part is the top. It's symmetric. So I can say that the area of the whole ellipse will be twice the area of the top of the ellipse. So in particular, the area is twice the integral. The very far left is negative a. The very far right is positive a. So it's from negative a to a of our function, b times the square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared dx. Now that is kind of a pain. We look at that and we say, well, it kind of looks like an inverse sign. But I have this a squared here. So if I let x equal a sine of theta, then x squared will be a squared sine squared of theta, and the a squareds will cancel. But first, let's find dx. And dx is equal to, well, the a is still there. The derivative of the sine of theta is cosine theta, and then times d theta. Now the square root of 1 minus x squared is the square root of 1 minus a squared sine squared theta over a squared. a squareds cancel. 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. And the square root of cosine squared theta is cosine of theta. So that's much nicer than that messy square root. So now we could put this all together. And we can say the area is equal to twice. There's the 2. And then the dx has an a. So here's the a. And then we have this b, so it's 2ab times the integral. And the square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared was cosine theta. The dx had a cosine theta d theta, so there's my cosine theta d theta. And that a, remember, came outside. The next step is to say, well, cosine squared of theta is 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And the 1 half and the 2 cancel. So we get AB times the integral of 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta d theta. And that is actually not too hard an integral. We can integrate 1 as theta. We can integrate cosine of 2 theta d theta by using u substitution. Let u equal 2 theta. Then du will be 2 d theta or d theta will be 1 half du, so here's a 1 half, and then the integral of the cosine of u is the sine of u, or the sine of 2 theta. We're going from 0 to pi because the angle theta starts at 0 on the x-axis and then goes to pi on the negative x-axis. And then we plug in. And plugging it isn't too hard. We have a theta is pi, Sine of 2 pi is 0. That goes away. Notice that if you plug in 0, you get 0 for theta. And sine of 0 is also 0. So all we get is this pi. So what we end up is just the ab times pi, or pi ab. So now we can say that the area of this general ellipse, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, is equal to pi times a times b. And I'm done with the problem.